What do you think this dragon's tattoo represents? I think it likely symbolizes a revolutionary intent. Why would that be? The hint lies in a card game familiar in Japan using playing cards called Daifugo. In this game, your rank determines your status, with first being the wealthiest, second the rich, third the commoner, fourth the poor, and fifth the very poor. In this card game, the weakest card is three and the strongest is two. However, collecting the same number from each suit can trigger a revolution, reversing the strength of the cards. Except for the Joker, three becomes the strongest. On the dragon's face are three diamonds, likely representing the three of diamonds. It was revealed in the latest chapters that the revolutionary army has been fighting on behalf of weak nations unable to pay the heavenly tribute. This means that, although currently in a weak position, there's an intention to elevate the rights and status of people in non-world government member countries through a revolution. Now, focus on the kanji in Daifugo. Tomi, meaning wealth. The story of One Piece essentially started with this single character representing wealth. However, Luffy seems to have no interest in money itself. In Water 7, he spent all his important money on a feast, nearly getting killed by Nami's armament hockey. This ties into Luffy's later statement when Kaido asked him what kind of world he aims for. Luffy answered, a world where my friends can eat their fill. The root cause of his friends being unable to eat ties back to the current regime of the world government, as detailed in this video. Thus, the manga One Piece revolves around overthrowing the current celestial dragon-led world government and turning the world upside down. This is integral to the story's core and likely tied to Luffy's ultimate dream. Until now, defeating a country's ruler solved the problem. However, this time Luffy truly have to face the world itself. The situation is different from Aeneas' lobby, where the sole objective was to rescue Robin. When it comes to a direct confrontation with the world government, it's questionable if just the Straw Hat crew and the Revolutionary Army can overthrow the current regime. This is because they face many enemies, including the Marines, the Seraphim, Cypher Paul, the Knights of God, the Five Elders, and Emu in their battle against the world. So how has Luffy faced numerous formidable enemies so far? With his Nakama. Thanks to his comrades, Luffy has been able to concentrate on fighting the bosses of each enemy group. More so, it's not just his crewmates. Luffy has formed alliances with various organizations and pirates. In the Summit War arc, former warlords Jinbei and Crocodile, revolutionary armies Ivankov, and the future four emperors Luffy and Buggy participated in Marineford. In the Whole Cake Island arc, Temporary alliances with Germa Double Six, the Fire Tank Pirates, and the Fishman Pirates allowed Luffy to rescue Sanji and escape Big Mom's territory. The Wano Country arc saw the formation of the Ninja Pirate Mink Samurai Alliance to defeat Kaido. Therefore, I believe a massive alliance beyond organizations will be formed to change the world government's regime. In the final battle against the world government, these cooperative groups might be represented by each suit of playing cards. Regarding the Alliance, I received a very interesting comment in this video. I'd be happy if you could share your thoughts on which organizations or individuals Luffy and his crew will cooperate with in the battle against the world government. This channel does not insist on subscriptions. Rather, I'm happier if you come back to watch our videos when you have time and share your opinions. As a translator with experience translating various battle manga, I analyze One Piece from a native Japanese perspective. 
In these videos, I explain nuances of the Japanese language that aren't translated in each chapter, so please save them to your watch later list and enjoy them when you have time. It seems some of you even listen to them while driving. Thank you very much. Let's start with the diamonds. As mentioned before, this probably refers to the revolutionary army led by Dragon. With three diamonds on Dragon's face, it represents the three of diamonds. The revolutionary army originally formed around Dragon, Ivankov, and Kuma, which also emphasizes the significance of the number three. Those who read chapter 1098 would have felt disgusted with the celestial dragons. Oda Sensei keeps piling tragedies on Kuma. However, Dawn Dusk viewers might have predicted this. We've discussed the importance of tragedy in One Piece. Kuma's tragedy could be one of the triggers for Luffy to challenge the world government. As mentioned in the SBS of Volume 233, Luffy innocently remarked that Kuma being turned into a cyborg was cool, not realizing the seriousness of the issue for Bonnie. This made him feel awkward, leading him to stop calling her bogey. This indicates that Luffy will challenge the world government for her and Kuma, who protected the Sunny for two years. I have theorized that Bonnie's mother is already deceased. For more details, please check this video. In short, Luffy doesn't aim to be a hero who saves everyone in the world like Kuma. Instead, when he fights to save a country, it's always to help a close friend. And these friends have all, without exception, already lost their mothers. Vivi's mother, Titi, Shirahoshi's mother, Otohime, Rebecca's mother, Scarlet, Momonosuke's mother, Toki. Thus, Bonnie's mother's death could be a significant trigger for Luffy to fight the world government. Vivi might also be a major factor, possibly revealing more about Titi's unknown past. Fourteen years ago, the Revolutionary Army lost Ginny to the world government. It seems the army was annihilated, likely by Marines or the Knights of God. The English translation says, they came out of nowhere and obliterated our squad but the original Japanese implies unexpected intervention by a third party, not just a surprise attack. Yokoyari typically refers to third party intervention. While it could be a high ranking Marine or Knights of God, it might also be an organization temporarily aligned with the world government, especially since Sakazuki believes in using evil to eradicate evil, as shown in his opposition to the abolition of the Seven Warlords system. Thus, the revolutionary army in the East Blue could have been destroyed by an organization other than the world government. If you have any interesting opinions, please share them in the comments. Regarding Sakazuki, there's already speculation about his past connection with Dragon, both being 55 years old, and Sakazuki referring to Luffy as Dragon's son suggests they might have been peers or rivals in the Navy. And it's possible that Dragon lost faith in the Navy's justice due to Sakazuki's strong ideology that evil must be defeated, even if it means sacrificing many lives. Recently in One Piece, the pasts of Kuzan, Garp, Borsalino, and Sentamaru have been touched upon a bit. This suggests that we might soon see the pasts of Sakazuki and Dragon as well, and once their flashback concludes, it's possible that a battle between the two of them might begin. Sakazuki has a history not just with Dragon, but also with the three brothers. Ace was killed by Sakazuki, and Luffy's scar is from him. I think the suit that fits these three brothers is Spades. Ace led the Spade Pirates, and his will was inherited by Sabo and Luffy. Since they are three brothers, the three of Spades comes to mind. 
Although Sabo is part of the Revolutionary Army, fitting the diamonds, his actions in the Dress Rosa arc, rushing to Luffy's aid regardless of his own position, suggest that the bond with his brothers is most important to him. Incidentally, the Straw Hat crew, with a total of 5,600 subordinates, holds a force comparable to the Revolutionary Army. Moreover, with Sabo currently influencing people around the world who share the spirit of revolution, separate from the Revolutionary Army, the force represented by the Spade is likely to become significantly powerful. Regarding Ace's initial settings, important information was revealed in the One Piece magazine and replica notes. This note is rare and available to only a limited number of people in Japan. Information from the replica notes that couldn't be covered in this video will be released exclusively to Patreon members. Since we limit the number of people who can join every month, check it out as soon as possible if you're interested. About Ace's initial settings, it appears his name was initially supposed to be different. It's written like this in Japanese, there are several possibilities when translating this into English, so the origin of this name is unclear. However, it has been explicitly stated that Ace was always meant to die, so the meaning of this name might be related to Lung, as he eventually died from his lungs being burned. Interestingly, the Ace of Spades is also known as the Death Card. Next, let's consider the group that fits the heart suit. Personally, the first that comes to mind is the Heart Pirates. After the Three of Diamonds and Three of Spades, we have the Three of Hearts, and Law was intended to be the third Corazon. Here again, the significant number three is emphasized. However, the Heart Pirates alone seem a bit underpowered as a fighting force. To add to this, I think other members of the worst generation, like Bonnie and Drake, will join forces. I understand that you might have this question. The Heart Pirates have already been defeated by Blackbeard. So, if Law were to join forces with Luffy, why wouldn't Kid also fit into this equation? To explain this, it's important to consider the narration used when each of these pirate crews was defeated by a Yonko. When Kid was defeated by Shanks, it was described as Kid Pirates Annihilated. Kaimetsu implies being destroyed or ceasing to exist. If the subject is an organization, it also means the organization no longer functions. Oda Sensei also mentioned in an SBS that we don't need to remember the 31 members of the Kid Pirates, suggesting that even if Kid himself survives, his pirate crew as a functioning unit is likely over. In contrast, when Law was defeated by Blackbeard, it was described as Heart Pirates Defeated. Haiboku simply means defeat and is entirely different from Kaimetsu. Just like the 2023 athletics losing 112 matches doesn't lead to the team's dissolution. This implies that the Heart Pirates still have a role to play in the story. Law seems more interested in uncovering the meaning of D than becoming Pirate King. Cooperating with Luffy to overthrow the world government is likely the best way to achieve this goal. Kid, on the other hand, aims to become the Pirate King himself, which is a slightly different direction. Regarding Bonnie and Drake, Bonnie, already aware of Kuma's past, will likely join Luffy in the fight against the world government. As for Drake, he helped free Law from Hawkins's capture in Wano. Perhaps now, Drake is harboring Law and Beppo somewhere, possibly in Elbaf. My personal theory is that they are in Elbaf. For more about the connection between Law and Elbaf and dinosaurs and giants, check out these videos. Additionally, Drake's ship, the Liberal Hind, and his red flag also hint at a revolutionary spirit. This suggests that Sword, which he leads, might also ally with Luffy. 
Ivankov mentioned that the Navy and the Revolutionary Army share the fundamental goal of helping people. And Vegapunk also mentioned that there are many members within the Navy with whom he can find mutual understanding of justice. If they understand the world government has been oppressing people worldwide, they might not fight against the government, but play a role similar to Fujitora in liberating slaves. Currently, Drake leads S.W.O.R.D., but Kobe, who has grown significantly since the incident with Garp, might take over as the leader of S.W.O.R.D. It's consider the remaining suit, which is the club. If this is completed, it signifies the achievement of the revolution. When thinking of clubs, Professor Clover probably comes to mind. Robin and Saul, carrying on O'Hara's will and still alive, might fit the Clover suit. But they're not a significant force in terms of combat strength. You might think this theory falls apart here. But remember, there's a playing card in this game, the Joker. The Joker can replace any card, meaning it can act as the Three of Clubs, triggering the revolution in the game. So, who in the One Piece world could represent the Joker? You're probably thinking of Doflamingo. <laughs> Oda initially planned to include him in Kaido's alliance, most of Kaido's Beast Pirates crew members are named after card games, like Jack, Queen, and King. And Doflamingo was supposed to be part of this lineup as Joker. This shows how the card game elements are frequently used in One Piece's story. From this perspective, I personally feel that Doflamingo will play a significant role in the battle against the world government. He's a former celestial dragon who suffered greatly at the hands of humans. If the current world government is overthrown, what will happen to the current celestial dragons? We'll discuss this in another video. Moreover, Doflamingo knows about the national treasure in Mariagejoie and will likely be a key character in the final chapter. Personally, I'd love to see a team-up between Luffy and Doflamingo, but another character might be the most fitting as Joker. That character is everyone's favorite. Buggy. His epithet is Buggy the Clown. While Doflamingo was a broker of weapons and smiles, Buggy is a broker of people. Usually, a deck of playing cards includes two Jokers in Japan, which interestingly reflects the roles of both Buggy and Doflamingo. The main members of Buggy's Cross Guild are Buggy, Crocodile, and Mihawk, making it a suitable organization to represent the Three of Clubs. The Cross Guild might not actively collaborate with the Straw Hat crew, but Buggy might play a crucial role in overthrowing the world government. However, the problem might arise once the Alliance achieves its goal of toppling the government. Buggy, being cunning, might betray the Alliance to seize the treasure for himself. This cover might represent that. Buggy playing with a monkey. Let's view it from a different perspective. Like this Hancock, the monkey symbolizes Luffy. Meaning, this door picture indicates Buggy standing in the way of Monkey D. Luffy. Moreover, he holds four square objects in his arm, symbolizing the road pone glyphs, and carries an object resembling the mysterious egg from Roger's ship. These two might just be the pirates who remain until the very end in the battle for the One Piece. And if this scenario comes to pass, we might also witness the final battle to determine the world's strongest swordsman. <laughs>